Hey go people! Well, this is a pretty good video. I'm just gonna cover a couple little parts. Because I used to work here. Inside one of America's deadliest police departments. Now, you're probably gonna be mad at me because I'm gonna take up a little bit for some of these officers. But I'm just being truthful, so you may not like it. Here comes a few bullet shots. Uh, I'm not sure how many they did. Let's uh, put this back on normal since I had it sped up. Let's try that again. Oh, that was almost normal speed. Uh, so you notice this cop has his uh, hand over his chest. We, we would teach, I would teach that many agencies, that same thing. This keeps your hand out of the way. If you got one hand out, always uh, keep that other hand here. It's a defensive move to protect yourself that if somebody's coming in to try to take your gun, you can defend yourself or defend your gun. So, uh, I don't know how many rounds they fired, but let's just say a lot. Vallejo, David, three shots fired, shots fired. Vallejo is once again investigating a deadly police shooting. These officers were... <laughs> V-Town. <laughs> Uh, before I were, I, I was there, what, what years was I working in Vallejo? Shit. Maybe 91, 92-ish area, I can't remember. It was, um, years before I got there, I think it was in 87 or 89, it was the, voted the, the most violent town for towns either over 100 or under 100,000. So, uh, it's a violent city. And that's the problem when cops go out and it's pretty much war every day. And you're going to see a couple shots in here. And I'll tell you, this is what we dealt with every day. Call to call the same stuff. It, it, it changes who you are. It doesn't change the fact that they're still police. We're still in America. They're required to use minimum force. They don't care because they have limited unity and they're protected celebrating in a gang-like ritualistic fashion the murder and death of black okay so they're not celebrating in a gang in a gang fashion that we kill people we celebrate that we survived a deadly encounter and that we were outnumbered or surprised and shit went bad and we're still alive that's what we're celebrating black and brown people i will fuck you up I was busy. Fifteen million dollars paid out in recent lawsuits. Oh, lots of money. This dude's got more tats than freaking the whole community, but whatever. The lawsuits accuse police of racial profiling, excessive force, and other misconduct. So this guy's getting hit in the head with a pistol. Cut. The police have been hunting and murdering people. Citizens. And I started thinking, what's gonna happen if we so this cop with all these tattoos is either retired or quit and he kind of talks. He kind of defends the cops. He does okay in some areas, but in some areas he's being a little too protect the blue. Get around the corner. And so we started shooting while he's running away from us. Who the fuck are you to be, to be the judge, jury and executioner that night? Just hours ago we watching all of these other families Kneeling I did a video on this shooting where they pulled up during the uh, peaceful protests and they were breaking into a drugstore with drugs and a guy had a brick and this cop in the back fires through the front windshield in between these two officers. You'll probably remember I did that video. Vallejo There's always candles and shootings at um, funeral homes and there's always people complaining about how everything in the community is the cop's fault. This is how you go to work every day. Hey, he pointed a gun at us. Don't move. Do not move. What about Vallejo? Put your hands out. Put your hands out. Oh. It'll be all right. We've been through this before. So I think this dude is a captain. And I will say this. In Vallejo, the people they promote for the most part are road dogs and uh, understand the violence of that city. So they back the cops a lot, probably more than they should, but they understand because you don't usually get promoted from outside in Vallejo. One shots? Yeah. Okay, so a lot of this is kind of uh, everybody playing the victim. 
and how nobody does anything wrong and it's just the cops out there killing people and it's you know they show the victims and they killed my brother and they killed my friend and it's you know it's i think this guy's a defense attorney house where i've worked for the vast majority of my career yeah so he's a public defender in solano county and he's and, he, and he's right i mean things that he says in here he's right as other parts spoken of or, or thought of as often I knew that the Vallejo Police Department was a completely different kind of animal. It is an aggressive, violent city. It's really pretty. It's got some coastline. We got the Coast Guard. We go out on a Coast Guard boat. We got boat patrol. I mean, look, it, it is. It's a typical California city. You got great weather, nice views, and it is just taken over with liberal left-wing policies that social justice and blame everybody for homeless, blame the cops for everything. It's shocking the number of things that just happen with a tremendous amount of really questionable detentions and contacts, many of which absolutely outrageous shooting. I mean, this guy drops down and just does a mag dump, even as the guy's falling. Questionable detentions and contact. So they shoot him here. Uh, now, I think he has a knife here, doesn't he? So the shooting is legal, but the amount of rounds? Contacts. Still firing. The guy is no threat and on the ground. Tremendous amount of really questionable detentions and contacts. Okay, guy on the ground, no threat, and we continue to shoot. For how long? Many of which turn violent. <laughs> See this guy laying in the street. Uh, that one movie came out to where the kids were laying in the streets when cars drive by to show their manhood. They took it out of the movie scene because too many people did it. Ladies and gentlemen, you are in no shape. And we used to drive around when, when that movie came out and idiots would be lying in the streets, you know, showing that they weren't scared to get run over. And because there were so many of them, we had more shit to do than deal with idiots laying in the street. We'd roll down the window and just drive by and go, get out of the street, you dumbass, and we'd keep going. Wouldn't arrest them, wouldn't harass them, wouldn't save them, wouldn't try to pull them out of the street to protect them. It was like, we had more important shit to do than to stop from idiots laying in the street. But I digress. And it is about to get the bad guy. The idea that there's us on one side and the criminals on the other. There absolutely is that attitude. And it's justified because it's true. The other side, the crime you hit. I got hit. And, and set a tone. And I wanted to be a person who, who was willing to do that. They just pulled up, going on some bitch ass shit. Every call you go on, it turns into this. Every stinking call. Yelling, you guys are... That, that's why when cops are arresting people because somebody tells them to fuck off or they're shitty, I'm just like, dude, you've never worked in a town to where everywhere you go and drive, you get that every... You got more more important things to do than worry about what somebody yells at you. I mean, but people don't understand that. So this, this documentary is pretty good, but you need to really... I, I'm, I'm all for holding cops accountable and they're out of control. But when you work in this environment every day, you, you have to develop a survival skill that is bar none. I mean, it it makes you good on the streets. You you better not drop your guard or you'll be a victim. I just pulled up, going on some bitch ass shit. My name is Joshua Coleman and I worked for the Vallejo Police Department for over 10 years. If I ask you, is the Vallejo PD's reputation for being aggressive? Or is there something behind that? I don't think that it's unwarranted. He's agreeing that it's not, they are aggressive. I'll say they're aggressive. The gr most aggressive department I've worked with or for, and I've worked around a lot of agencies. The frustrating thing for me boils down to what we have become hyper-focused on. 
that this is an epidemic that is out of control. When are we going to focus on every call? It's you against a group of people. And if you hang around, they start throwing cigarettes or bottles or whatever. And I know a lot of cops will be like, man, I go in and arrest them. You can't when there's, you're just outnumbered. You just get in your car and you go to your next call and whatever. What is going on in our communities who are raised to believe that, that it's normal for your family members to get murdered and it's normal to carry a firearm and it's normal to why why shouldn't it be normal to carry a firearm to have an adversarial relationship with the police but i would ask that the news um the media and what it would be like to be in our shoes we get to see the true the true um violent capability of of people the crimes in this city I mean, again, I worked in Sacramento a lot longer than here and Stockton and, and, and all kind of really nasty areas that I've done warrants or are working in. And I'm telling you, Vallejo, hands down, has the most violent, hideous crime uh, populace that I've ever seen. Unfortunately, those are the things that we see that shape us. I think Vallejo cops start at maybe 160 now uh i could be wrong i mean when when you read what they're hiring and starting salary is that's that's not what really cops make because you know we get clothing allowance and we get this allowance and we get overtime and we get extra holiday and all the other stuff and i mean probably with benefits it's probably closer to 200 grand i, I bet you there's not a vallejo cop that doesn't clear with overtime 200 grand i'd be shocked uh man and he pointed the rifle at. The department's response to the shooting was just sloppy from the very beginning. All right, thank you. So they got a black police chief, so they can't claim racism when the cop supports cops. Perfect. These are the facts as we know them today. On June 2nd, our officers received a return call indicating that looters have returned to the Walgreens. This is where they shot through the car and killed that dude that was kneeling down. Supposedly he had a brick or something, I think. I forgot. Back to the scene, AC. Okay. It's about a week or so um, after George Floyd's death. Um, protests and riots had, had sort of gripped the country. Now these guys are weapons, breaking in, destruction, tearing up signs. This is a mostly peaceful protest for the libs. And the Bay Area, there was um, an effort to loot uh, the Walgreens. Right. When you work in Vallejo, every call you go on and you review the video footage, you see the same. And then you have a strategic tactical response team that's going to respond to the most high profile incidents and they get dispersed out to this Walgreens without any type of plan. The officers from the Vallejo PD pulled up in a number of unmarked vehicles. It looks like they're armed, possibly armed. Everyone fled in two cars. Shocking. Every call you go on, people fleeing in cars. Um, except Sean. Sean was in the park. Oh, this is the poor guy that got killed unjustly. Nice car. Nice tattoos. Look at that. Got the Bay Bridge. Wow. Nice. All right, X-ray 42, we're out Walgreens. The truck. I'm sure he was just walking by, maybe getting Skittles out for a jog when uh, he got shot. I'm sure he wasn't involved in the peaceful protest breaking in. Carrying Detective Tom and his two partners pulled into the parking lot with lights on. <laughs> He's going to flash bang him as soon as he gets out. <laughs> Detective Tom pointed his M4 rifle through the heads of his partners. Fired, I believe, five shots. Um, one of them struck Sean in the back of the skull and killed him. In the back of the skull. It, it looks like combat footage from Afghanistan. A silenced assault rifle, 
through the window of a truck while it was moving. 44, we got shots fired at Walgreens. And so I think the department got But suddenly stopped. The department originally said that um, Sean had taken a kneeling tactical shooting position and was reaching for what that he believed was a firearm um, and pointing it at the vehicle. And none of that makes sense when you look at the forensics. And the very simple Kong say, what did he point, point at us? This whole idea that, that he was taking a tactical shooting stance. You notice the cops are walking up with a couple officers. That's, that's why when I see these cops waiting for 15 officers with a guy on the ground, I'm like, what the, are you guys pussies? If you got a couple officers, go up, get the gun, put the guy in handcuffs. This whole idea that, that he was taking a tactical shooting stance, it, it just becomes a fallacy. Oh, roll him over, cuff him, roll him over, cuff him. Oh, you stupid. He was that thoughtful or strategic. I think it might just be something that was ingrained in him, hey, making officers that believe that every person they encounter With a seat again angles that well and I see what looks like the handle of a pistol I immediately went through my head I was like we're getting in a shootout 100% I was like we're getting in a shootout and then once that happens it's a cascade I knew that I had to fire multiple rounds that's the front of the PD I'm surprised they haven't updated it that's either that's an old photo that's the same way the PD looks quickly out. with a hope that one of those rounds would be effective in, in stopping someone who I believe was trying to kill us while he was a Vallejo police officer. You move, I'm gonna put a bullet in your fucking head! You understand me? That's normal language. That's how you communicate when you're dealing with a violent community. Sorry, I know people don't wanna hear it. More disturbing as time went on. Where are you shot? Ah, Everywhere. Ah, oh, you rammed my friend. You rammed me. We thought you were gonna kill him. Uh, no. And each no. one is progressively... No. I think they get into the bent badges and how they bent badges and how it went into the first time they discussed it and then they tried to cover it up. Um, just, I'm telling you, man, it is not a great place to work if you're looking for positive community environment and um, it doesn't. At the Vallejo Police Department that have been in a shooting. So these are all the officers that were in shootings. <laughs> or been in a fatal incident over the last 25 years or so. When they shot so-and-so and putting the puzzle pieces Tenant now, the officers over and over again. ...against members of the Vallejo Police Department that they had a tradition of officers bending their badges as a way to... That was not done when I was there. I'd never heard of that until late. That's a recent thing and... Whatever. I mean, to me, it's not the end of the world, but whatever. Mark people they had killed. In the wake of the this story about the tradition of badge bending, this is yet another black guy for the Vallejo Police Department, still dealing with community distrust and a lot of deadly <laughs> community distrust. They've had community distrust since that department was founded. Shootings. I think among the people who knew about it, it was a a status. Lots of meat eaters at that department. You don't have a lot of um, pink panty easy guys at that department. That people wanted to earn. That's from Vallejo PD. Uh, then this is the one that was bent. You can see that this point is lower than the rest of them. Do you know who started it? I do know. Who, yeah. started, the, who started the practice of bed bent? Uh, Kent Tribble. Can't triple your sergeant. Correct. After my first um, officer involved shooting. Man, he just dimed out that sergeant. He said, wouldn't it be nice if you could look around and see a visual indicator of people that you could trust in a moment of chaos and know that that was somebody that you could rely on. And then he took my badge and he bent it. And so you can kind of see that it, there's a little bit of. There are lots of moments of chaos at the Vallejo Police Department. And people just really don't get it. That's why I kind of... Breaking through the, the between this and the official process. So like, everybody looks up to, but he's also a guy that's just very aggressive dude. You know, like he's just a very commanding presence. And I 
I can think of one particular incident when I was a brand new police officer and uh, you were required to go on ride-alongs every month right to the side of my head and start just drew his gun and put his gun right now I never had no cop put a gun on my head uh, I, I don't know about this story it sounds pretty far-fetched but he says this guy pulled a gun pointed to his head I, that sounds pretty far-fetched this dude straight up just drew his gun and put his gun right to the side of my head and started screaming at me and was like put your fucking seatbelt on I'm not gonna fucking tell you again and I was like look now there is a lot of intimidation and treating new guys like shit and hazing and until you've proven yourself you're gonna get treated like a dumbass rookie so I, I do believe that but I've never had a cop anywhere point their gun at me because I'm pretty sure it would have been go time. Looking at this dude, and I got hot. I got, I got so hot inside it. And what made me more pissed is that I ate it. And I swallowed that. And uh, I never forgot that. I never forgot that. To illustrate how, I guess, how ashamed I was, I didn't tell like the most one of the most most important people in my my life. Uh, okay, so 23 minutes. Uh, this video is 44 minutes. It's on Vice News, Inside America's Deadly Police Department. Um, pretty good watch. Um, I'll take questions and comments, but um, it is what it is. This is a I'm sorry, it's a very violent uh, city. And when you're working with a violent city, you cannot have weak PC officers. Uh, in this town, kindness is seen as weakness. They respect you. Uh, I remember when I first started there, I called somebody, sir. And the guys that were getting handcuffed, thrown around, were laughing like, "Oh, he's a rookie, man! Look at him! He's, he he called us sir. He's a rookie." <laughs> and they were like, "Cause you just—that's not the way they're used to being talked to. And if you're nice to them, they know you're weak, and they'll eat you up." So, it, look, it's a different, but this is this is a daily. Um, this is where they jump on the freaking. Welcome to here, though. But I thought this interview was going to be about. What we're doing internally. Every call, every incident, everywhere you go. I know you guys want to go into the past history and, you know. Every uh, call. When we had New Jim Crow, call. we had, um, uh, you know, slavery in our country. Oh my God. We had to move forward. Oh my God. Here I'm telling you. This is asking, you know, the cop definite. Every call. My motherfucking life ain't gonna never be the same. Every call. Think about it, people. I mean, it's easy to criticize, but you try going to work every day and every call. And that's what you get. Alright. Uh, that guy? This guy's a badge bender! <laughs> that guy's a badge bender. <laughs> Every call, I work in the hospital. It's Rodney King, man. Look what they did to me. <laughs> in city council, Drew. Three of shopping within about this. Not crap. Still, all the ones. Other Sean Monte. Oh, so you're just you're gonna walk away. We're not gonna say about it. All these people. We're William McCoy, your support here for one family is a support for all of our families. We want to give the opportunity Every to all call. the impact to do it. There are so many Every better. Every night. Satisfaction. Find a way. Okay. Want to go watch it? Knock yourself out. Uh, we'll end that there.